We'll begin in our reclined butterfly posture, making our way onto our backs, bringing the feet together and the knees wide. Perhaps we invite props here underneath the thighs just to support the hips. And if you'd like to join me here with the hand placement, bringing one hand to the belly and one connected to the heart. Noticing the length of the spine connected to the earth. Giving ourselves a couple of cleansing breaths here to settle into our practice. Washing away anything that's come before this moment in time. Giving ourselves permission to be in this space with this body and this breath here and now. Start to notice your breath. Feel free to stay with the natural rhythm of breath. If we're feeling a little bit more anxious or high energy, you can work in the three parts breath and take a long extended exhale. So this breath, you would breathe into the base of the belly, let your breath rise into the rib cage and then the chest. In the exhale, softening the chest to the ribs and the belly. Perhaps breathing in for the count of three. And exhaling for the count of five. So we come here today soothing the heart whatever that means for you in this moment whether that's giving yourself this space and gratitude for your practice whether that's creating this time and space to process and acknowledging perhaps any grief or hardship that we are working through at this time Finding your own intention for this practice. Slowly we begin to release. Allow the knees to come into the chest. Find your gentle rocking here, right to left. And we'll roll onto one side making our way into a tabletop position, preparing for grasshopper pose. If we do have blocks, go ahead and grab them here. If you don't wanna use blocks for this pose, that's fine as well. Palms on the blocks here, working our way down onto forearms, walk the knees a little bit behind the hips and the toes will curl. Palms will come together if we can. Start to sip the hips back slightly and draw your forehead in between the arms, bringing the palms overhead so the thumb connects to the base of the neck or in between the shoulder blades. If this pose is too intense for the shoulders or arms, we can always release the blocks. So this is your practice, finding what works for you. I would like to read a quote by Darren Main in his book, The River of Wisdom. The world would have us fill every space and occupy every corner of the mind. Yoga asks us to become empty, to come to the practice in openness and allow the practice to remove our notions of good and bad, rich and poor, health and disease, 
and to sit and simply witness without shame, without guilt, and without judgment. Yoga allows us to let go of everything and hold on to nothing. It allows us to let go of our preconceptions about what yoga is, what it means to live a spiritual life, and how to achieve enlightenment. Whether slowly or in an instant, yoga empties us. What remains is a silence that surpasses understanding, is beyond words, and gives us the eyes to witness the suffering of the world, the ears to hear the world calling out for compassion, and the heart to answer that call. So knowing that we all show up for different reasons, creating that safe container and that safe space for what this practice and what yoga means for you in this moment. and acknowledging whatever arises without judgment. Breathing into that space. Breathing into the heart space. Inviting in the energy of what you need today. Calling it in. Breathing it in. Inviting that softening places that we feel, the edginess. Let's take our last few breaths. And on your next breath, we'll start to release, start to extend the arms forward, hips over knees, release your blocks. Come on all to all fours and tap the tops of the feet into the mat. If you had the toes curled, go ahead and take a few rounds of cat-cow here, drawing the belly towards earth and rounding the spine. Making our way into a child's pose here, just for a couple breaths. Big toes touch, knees nice and wide, snuggle the rib cage between the thighs and rest the forehead on the mat. Breathing through the back body. Start to lift here. We'll stay in child's pose with the lower body and come into our folded wings. So you'll start with the sphinx arms. Go ahead and fold your right arm first and then the left arm in front. And if you can, start to walk your arms away from each other so the elbows might cross. If you need support for the head, a block might be handy underneath the forehead. If the arms and shoulders are not comfortable taking this deep posture, you can always keep your elbows bent and just walk your arms out forward and rest your forehead in between the crook of the elbow. 
Another option would be to take a single arm, such as thread the needle, where you would take your left arm under first and release your right arm out in front. So do what feels good here. We're all gonna look different in this posture and it's all gonna feel different even when we switch the arms. So start to notice here where you're feeling the stretch. If we have pretty tight connective tissue through the back and the shoulder girdle between the shoulder blades, we'll start to feel that opening here. Now, if we have the chin resting here on that front arm, just make sure that we can breathe comfortably. It's not the most ideal placement for our head and neck, so find what works for you. Good. Opening through the back of the heart here, so creating that space through the back body. Couple more breaths here. slowly release start to lift uncross the arms we'll sit back into a thunderbolt pose so draw your knees in towards each other sit back on the heels and start to roll the shoulders up down and back good shake out the arms take a moment here just observe And then we'll move on to the other side. So notice if you don't need a prop under the forehead as well. Come back through Sphinx arms, left arm folds in first, right on top. Start to wiggle the fingertips away from each other, taking that crisscross, or as they call it, folded wings in our yin. Once again, if we can't cross the elbows here or it's not comfortable for the shoulder, go ahead and just keep the forearms parallel here next to each other and draw your arms forward so they're more into that sphinx variation and then you would rest your forehead on the forearm or the crook of the elbow adjustments here for the head and neck make sure you can breathe comfortably notice if this side feels a little bit tighter a little more tense this stretch can really do wonders here. Allowing ourselves to be present in our physical body. Even if we have that mind chatter here, we can thank the thoughts, thank the mind, and then come back to the sensation or back to the breath. It's a practice. And that's why we cultivate these practices. necessary to do frequently so we can reap the benefits of our work right and isn't it beautiful to find work in the 
the stillness of a posture. The work is being done. Last couple breaths here. We're not holding folded wings as long as we did our former postures. slowly release and cross the arms wherever they may be knees walk in thunderbolt here sitting back on the heels rolling the shoulders up towards ears and down the back wiggle the fingers wiggle the arms shake out any sensation here and then let's come into our very basic Balasana or child's pose. The knees can stay together, the forehead rests, and the arms wrap around the legs. So yes, there is a little bit of compression here in the belly. Try to breathe through your back body as we give the shoulders a break here. Of course, if this is not comfortable, we always can lay on the belly instead. Starting to lift here, we'll make our way onto the belly. Let's come into starfish pose next. Start to inch your body over to the right side of the mat and we'll reach our left arm out so the forearm and the wrist is in line with our left shoulder. Right elbow bends, palm is pressing down and we'll start to move into our starfish by pressing through the palm and then rolling onto that left hip, bending the knees so they're in line with the navel. And that right palm can stay just where it is next to the face or you can start to wrap it behind your back and the palm will face out. So notice your head here. If your head is not comfortably resting on the earth, I will ask you to bring a blanket or a block. And how you would readjust or come out of the pose is to extend your legs and come back onto the belly and reset. So don't try to wiggle around here in this very tender posture with your arm having this much pressure on it. So staying here and feeling that sensation, feeling that openness, moving from your heart center out through the left side of the chest, moving down through the fingertips. Another variation and option here is to take that top foot so your right knee will bend and you'll place your right foot behind the left. Go ahead and ground that foot towards the earth. Knee is spinning up towards the sky. Hip is opening here slightly. Just an option. So any of these variations become too intense, go ahead and release them. Especially if this is your first time in starfish pose. We don't need to shock the body in our yin practice. Right, so yin is a very edgy practice. It's not all about relaxation. We learn to sit in stillness with discomfort, which is physically part of the connective tissue, starting to open, starting to release. And we do that by putting minor stress on the body over time so not too much and not too little let your body be your most divine and wise teacher working with your body in every moment beautiful everybody we have about another minute here Nice deep breaths. It's 
So doing this type of stretch helps to open that space through the chest and collarbone where we're often rounding forward. So that also helps to open the heart space. We often round forward as a means of protecting ourselves and protecting the space of the heart so that we're not vulnerable. And so this is a way to open up and say, it's okay, I am safe. I am allowed to be here. Let's begin to release, release your right palm, stack the knees, extend the legs, roll onto the belly. Release that left arm beside the body, both arms beside you, forehead resting. Start to roll the shoulders up towards the ears and down the back a couple times. And then take a moment here just to rest. If you feel like you need something else here, go ahead and find that. Or we just find that gentle rebound, couple breaths, breathing down. Let's start to make our way to the other side. Just gently shimmy the body to the left side of the mat. Extend your right arm out so the palm is in line with your shoulder, palm facing down. Bend your left elbow, press through the left palm, roll onto your hip so your knees are in line with your belly button. This may be where we stay today, nice and comfortable supporting with the left palm. If you'd like to take that first variation, start to wrap that top arm, your left arm around, and the palm will face out behind the small of the back. Remembering here to support the head and neck if, it's dis if there's any discomfort, if it's just resting in space and doesn't have any groundedness, we definitely will bring a prop here. And then if you'd like to take that final variation we'll offer today, you can bring your left foot behind the right, spinning that knee up towards the sky and grounding that left foot towards earth. All options here. So what a beautiful earthbound practice, yin yoga. We get to connect to our bodies using gravity. Gravity as a tool for our practice to help us get really rooted, really close to the earth. And this will help us, right? It will help us process. So breathing techniques, you can send your breath down into the root, sending your breath down into your base, releasing those emotions into the earth and drawing the earth energy up, right? So it, whether that's through your feet and the base of the spine, whether you're seated or standing or lying down, you can always visualize that practice. Feeling supported here by the earth, allowing the earth to hold our practice, to hold us in this moment. Feeling safe and connected. Gentle release here, left palm beside the body. Stack the knees, extend the legs, rock onto the belly and rest the arms beside the body, forehead on the earth, rolling the shoulders up, down and back. Couple breaths here in a state of stillness. 
maybe we come into a crocodile here. It's a very soft back bend. So you'll bring your palms stacked underneath the forehead and just rest. Gentle press back into our child's pose. Your variation here, big toes touch, knees nice and wide, or knees together. Just a couple breaths here, resetting. Next pose is heart bench. We'll start to lift up here. Grab both of your blocks. Take your first block to the lowest level and the second to the medium height. We're gonna make our way down using the first block to support the shoulder blades, lining the lowest edge of the block up with the lowest edge of your shoulder blade. Release the back of the head on to that second block. Take adjustments here. Make sure you feel supported. The blocks should not be touching each other. There should be space between both of them. So what we're looking for is that lifting through the chest, supporting our gentle heart opener here. Options, it might feel nice to extend the legs out, heels to each corner of the mat and relaxing the legs. You might also bring the feet together and the knees wide, coming back to that butterfly pose. Wherever you land here, start to relax. Maybe the eyes soften. Maybe the arms start to make their way overhead. You can either interlace the fingers, palms to touch, you can also grab opposite elbow. I'd like to read another quote by Rumi. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness. Some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all, even if they're a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture. Still, treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. And be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. Slowly beginning to release the arms if they're overhead. Let's walk the feet in, bending the knees, grounding the feet, using your forearms and palms to lift you up. And let's go straight into our next pose, which is caterpillar pose, a counter stretch for heart bench. Go ahead and grab your blocks, maybe a pillow, and underneath, put them underneath the knees here for support. Hinge forward from the hips and we'll come into that 
forward fold. So you may be feeling this through your hamstrings. Try to relax the arms, relax the feet, relax the head and neck. Now, if you do feel like there's any type of jutting out here through the low back, you can use a blanket or a, an elevated prop underneath the hips. So once again, creating space through the back of the heart, softening here. Can we breathe into that space? As Rumi said, greeting every guest. So allowing our emotions to guide us and teach us. So digesting this practice in the way that you need to. If anything that's been quoted or said does not resonate with you, leave it at the door. This is your space. This is your practice. And we gently rise, we walk the hands back, releasing our props. Go ahead and take a nice gentle windshield wiper, bend the knees, take the knees right and left. Maybe that gentle twist here, bringing that top arm up and over, feeling that stretch through the side body. This is a really wonderful stretch. If you've never tried it. All right, go ahead and make sure you're even on both sides. And we come all the way down. Preparing for twist, we'll hug the knees in. And then on your next exhale, let your knees fall to your right side. You can invite a half goalpost arm where your left arm and elbow is bent. You can also just extend the arm as well. It's really up to you. Right palm can be grounded onto that top thigh. You can also release the arm out. Whatever works, drawing your shoulder blades, onto the earth, relaxing the back of the head. So we're winding down. Observing the spaciousness that we may have created. whether that's mental, physical, or emotional. And when we create that space, we can fill it with light. So when one thing leaves, we bring our inner light into that space.
breathing, feeling that inner light expanding. Slowly allow knees to come back through center, and if you need to readjust, you can tap down here and just shimmy the hips to your right. Draw your knees to the left side, reach out with that right arm. You can half goal post or start to reach it up and over or extend it out. Let the back of the head be so soft, the neck comfortable, the gaze relaxed. some soothing breath. Being so gentle with ourselves. So kind. Next breath, draw the knees in. Take a happy baby here for a breath or two if you'd like. Grabbing outer edges of the feet or shins, keeping the back body rooted, keeping the feet flexed here, a couple breaths. And then begin to make your way into your master pose, Shavasana. However that looks for you, you can take a traditional posture, heels to the corners, or support your legs here, bring a prop underneath the knees. Releasing our practice today. Stay as long as you need in this practice. And if you're ready, you can start to reawaken, wiggling toes and fingers. Maybe arms are reaching overhead, toes forward. Draw the knees in and rock onto one side. And so gently press up as we come into our easy seat. Reaching the arms high, just gathering all of your light, and all of your wisdom, and bringing it down into the space of the heart as you find gratitude for yourself in this moment, in this practice. Thank you for joining me. 
so much love. Om Shanti. Namaste.